I'm Jessica Romano with Carnegie Museum of Natural History, and today I'm talking to Stevie Kennedy Gold, Collection Manager for the section of Amphibians and Reptiles. Today we're in the Alcohol House. So Stevie, we're in the Alcohol House, which is full of specimens in jars um, from all over the world, and some would think a lot of these are creepy. What would you pick as the creepiest specimen in the Alcohol House? Man, that is a good question, but today I have a fun little story, actually, that goes with these two specimens. Um, and it's a story courtesy of our postdoc, Amanda Martin. So back in, I believe it was June or July of this year, 2020, a publication came out talking about a snake that disembowels its prey. And that's kind of new for snakes. So snakes typically eat their prey whole. That's what they do. But this specific specimen and species, I'll show you the example. Um, its scientific name is, sorry, he's very leaky right now, <laughs> is um, Oligodon fasciolatus. So the common name is the small banded, so you can see the small bands all along him, Kukuri snake. So what's really neat about these guys is that they have a really, really sharp back fang. So this snake preys on this specific species of toad. The common name is the common toad, but its scientific name is Didiophrynus melanistic. These guys have ufotoxin in their parotid glands. So that's this big old bump right behind their eyeball. So they'll secrete toxins out of this if a predator comes upon them. And it's noxious, it's really painful, so the snake doesn't want to get hit by them. And what these scientists saw was that the snake will go up to this toad, they'll fight, 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 fight. And the snake will get covered in this glucotoxin, so it retracts, wipes itself off in the leaves and the leaf litter, get all that toxin off of them, and then come back and fight, 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 fight with the toad. And inevitably, with that sharp back thing, it will cut open the toad's belly, which is really morbid, cut open the toad's belly, and then as the toad basically lays there dying, the snake will start taking parts of the toad's body out, organ by organ, using its sharp teeth to break it apart and swallow those organs whole. A snake disemboweling a toad is not very common. So it's pretty creepy. I mean, the snake itself, like I said, it's really pretty. Beautiful small bands. Um, that's a really unique way to eat things. You can find them in Thailand, so both species are present in Thailand. Yeah. So that's our creepy critter for I, today. <laughs> I would definitely call that creepy. Yeah, for yeah, sure. It's different. So this snake and this toad, are they species that live in the same location, like with each other? Yeah. One is adapted to um, I guess the adaptations of the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the scientists speculate that because of these toxins, uh, that when the three instances that they witnessed this, that the, the toad itself was a big adult toad, so like this guy that I showed you, right? This is a pretty chunky toad compared to a not so chunky snake, right? But somehow the snake was able to eat parts of this toad and it did that by disemboweling it. And the speculation, as I was saying, is maybe adults are too big, okay, or maybe these adults are too toxic. So you don't want to get all that toxin over and in you. So by opening up the abdomen or the lower belly, you can avoid the toxin, but still get your nice food. I would definitely consider that um, a creepy example from your collection. Um, and although I think, you know, looking around here, people might think a lot of these specimens are creepy. I think that's a particularly creepy scenario that you described to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so yeah, so most folks come in here and they get awestruck and then some of them, they're either like mouth or drop because, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous in here. And then others are like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. And I'm like, you know, you have to stop, take a step back and really you're just sitting in a place full of history. So yeah, it's a little creepy that all of these jars are full of, you know, specimens, but they have awesome stories like these two that I just showed you guys today. And each one of them has a similar, you know, unique or creepy story behind them too. So, you know, that's why I encourage folks, get into science, do research, have fun. You never know what you'll see when you're in the forest. <laughs>